everybody. My name is Christine. I'm from Rushing River Apiaries up here in Terrace. Um, and today I'm going to show you how we do our splits uh, for the spring. I'll show you how we do it to hopefully take more than one split off a hive, but then I'll also kind of talk through what that can look like if you're just trying to split your own hive into two to expand your operation. Um, to start, what you're going to need is um, a place to put extra frames. These pro nuke boxes are awesome. You're going to be rearranging basically everything in the hive. So somewhere to just hold things as you decide where to put them uh, is a good idea. You can use an empty hive box. You can use a pro nuke box. If you don't have either one of those on hand, you can use um, a Rubbermaid container. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just something to help you sort some frames before you put things back together. Um, I have my smoker lit. Mine is kind of on its last legs, uh, but hopefully it'll get me through this last hive that I have to do at this yard. We use a queen excluder when we do this. Um, I can talk through an option for doing without a queen excluder, but I'll be using this. And then I have my brush and hive tool as always, and a little clip uh, to keep the queen in so that we can keep track of her uh, before we put the hive all back together. I also am dressed kind of in like full armor for this. Uh, this is one of the more disruptive things that we do as far as bee management. Um, I already have my hood up and gloves on because I just did the neighboring hive and they haven't forgiven me for it yet. So uh, as always, we're working as, as gently as we can, um, but this is one of the biggest shuffles that we do in the summer. So the purpose here is turning one hive, a hive that has come through winter and is looking nice and strong, you to even consider splitting, you want to make sure that you have more than four frames of brood in the hive, uh, because that's kind of what you want to leave behind in the existing hive, is at least three of those. So um, assess your hive for strength before starting to split. Um, so you're looking for that more than four frames of brood. Uh, ideally, a lot of ours coming through have six, seven, eight, and we're going to make more than one split out of them. You also want to make sure that you have done a mite test and or treated for Varroa mites, especially if you are going to be selling or gifting the nukes. It's also a really good idea to have them inspected by a regional bee inspector before any kind of sale. Um, it's not a big issue if you're just expanding your own operation, but before you're giving someone bees, it's just that third party uh, to make sure that you're giving something or selling something that's in good health. So, what we're going to be doing is going through all three of these boxes. So these bees overwintered into, we added the third box probably three weeks ago. Um, we don't use queen excluders when we add boxes, so I do expect that I'll see a little bit of brood in all three boxes, or at least I need to look through all three boxes to find where the brood is. Um, and we're going to sort it so that what is left behind in the existing box, we're going to put on the bottom. The queen will be in there. Then we're going to put a queen excluder, and we're going to put anything that we're going to take for our new nuke in this second box. And then any food stores or what will become your second box once you get rid of this one will go in the top. So any uncapped honey um, or any blank frames. So that's kind of the reorg that we're doing. And I'll talk through all of it as I go here as well. Lots of people ask about these. We use attic boxes on all of our hives. In winter, it's where we put the insulation. In summer, um, they take up a lot of storage space to put them anywhere else. They also hide our hive bucket or our feeder buckets when we use them and they allow us to keep this open top entrance uh, which we have come to really like. So that's what that empty box is on top and now I'm getting down into the first box of bees here under our inner cover. So I like to set up my workspace so I also have places to put two boxes side by side instead of stacking them vertically like I would for a normal inspection. So I have my lid and my attic box in one place. That's where one of these boxes will go. And then I'm going to put my inner cover beside it because I can also sit 
another hive body on there. And then I can have all three open hive bodies as I move things around and decide where things need to go. to the middle until I see what they're what they're up to in here. Always when I expect I take this first frame out and leave it outside and that leaves me lots of room to move things around in the middle and then at the end I just stick it back in. This is also a good time to take out any capped honey that might have been left over the winter that they didn't consume or uh, in a nice spring that they may have already collected and capped. This is a really good opportunity to do that. Um, and if I find any capped honey, then I will definitely be taking it. Whoa, this one's good and stuck with some burr comb. All right, so, oh yeah, on both sides, this is a really nice capped brood frame. And I want to put my capped brood in the bottom box. So I'm leaving the closest to emerging bees in the bottom box. That's what's gonna stay in the original hive. So when I find a frame of capped brood, I'm gonna have a really close look at it for the queen. I'm going to use this extra box that I have right here to make kind of the hive that is staying behind. So I'm going to put this frame of capped brood in here. That's what eventually will go down into this bottom box to stay with the original. You can take the time to scrape off that burr comb, the bit of drone comb on the bottom. Um, it is nice to keep a hive nice and tidy like that. Just for the sake of time on this video, I'm not going to do it today. starting to see some walking drones. There's quite a whole frame of drones. This is not something that I would like to find in a nuke, especially if you're selling your nuke. So just because of what this one looks like, I know that it's gonna stay with the original hive. Um, although on the other side, you'll see that it's got some nice capped worker brood. You don't see the queen. So this will go in here as well. getting into a nice frame of new wax which is lovely and this is where you're going to test your little egg finding skills so a tip for that is you want to look at where the sun is and aim your frame so that the sun is shining right down into those cells and now even with kind of white on yellow or light on light I can see eggs in the bottom of each of these cells so I know that this is one of the newer parts of the hive that she's laid up, and I'm gonna look extra close for the queen on this one. I don't see her. Um, so what I'm gonna do, now if you have two containers, I'm not down deep enough to start moving things within here yet, but this frame of eggs, any eggs or young larva, is what I'm gonna put in the second box. So capped brood in the bottom, at least three frames, that's what's staying behind. And I'm gonna put my younger brood up top, which includes eggs and larvae. So this frame will eventually go in here, um, but I'm not down here yet. So what I'm gonna do instead, and this is a handy trick I use for all kinds of things, is I'm gonna slide this one back in. And with the pointy edge of my hive tool, I'm gonna mark two little lines right in the frame. That'll let me quickly go through and any with two lines I know are brood that I'm going to move down into box two. Those go away like usually by the next time I inspect you can hardly see them anymore. They kind of just stay long enough uh, to help you identify things again in the 
in the same inspection. Okay, and now I'm starting to see some more food, so I think we've reached the end of the nest in this box. So I expect that the rest of this is going to be um, kind of open, uncapped honey. I'll just check one more to make sure. Yeah, we're into food. So this third box will be open honey and blank frames. But I have that one marked brood, um, young brood frame in there that I'm going to go back for. Yeah. This box is going to go over here. And it's not full anymore. I've got uh, the blank side frame that I took out. I've got the two frames of capped brood that I have in my little box here that are going to stay with the original hive. So I'm starting to mix things around, but now I also have more room in here so that as I find those open honey frames, I can put them directly where I want them now. So again, I take out this edge frame and leave it out. There's not usually anything happening way over there anyway. You can smoke them down a bit if they're in your way. I don't have much life left in my smoker. I can see on here that I broke open some drone comb because uh, it was built in between the frames and that's normal. They'll, they'll clean it all up. Hmm, already we've got a little patch of capped fruit but not too much on this one as well and then lots of food surrounding it. So this is one of those that you could stand here and puzzle over it for a while. I just call it kind of a maybe frame. Um, because it's capped, I'm going to put it in with my capped brood, but I'm going to leave it over to the side uh, because depending on what else I find as I go through here, I may choose to put it in the bottom box or the second box up. on this one. So now that I'm in my second box, I'm going to start to leave the things in here that I want in this second box, which is what I'm going to take as my splits. For me, that's anything that is young larva, um, eggs, larva, and anything maybe that is just kind of patchy, like a little bit of capped fruit, um, a little bit of larva, a little bit of food around it, that patchiness. Especially if you're keeping it for yourself, you need to be a little bit fussier if you are um, selling your nukes about what each one of those frames is going to look like. So I'm going to put this one back in here to stay in my second box. right here so this is kind of the oldest capped brood in the hive and I think that's why she hasn't had a chance to lay in that blank space again is just because it's all just emerging now so I'm not seeing any eggs I'm seeing more capped and for now I'm gonna guess that this might be my third frame of capped brood that I'm gonna leave in the original so now I've got three capped brood in here and my one maybe frame that I haven't decided yet whether it'll go up or down. This is a really nice mixed, mixed brood age frame. There's a patch of capped brood and then she's already backfilled with some larva. There's some varying sizes. 
this would be a good place for her to be hanging out, so I'm having an extra close look for the queen. Starting to see lots of drones on frames and drone home, and that's a really good sign that it's almost uh, mating time for queens. So if you're doing a split and you're hoping that they will raise their own queen, um, which is certainly a possibility and a more economical way to do it than buying queens, um, seeing drones is the cue that, that that's ready to happen. They're starting to have enough drones in the area that your queen could reasonably mate. There is kind of a plan B if I don't find the queen, but I certainly prefer to find her. <laughs> Not on that one. of it though and now that I have a bit more room in here from removing some stuff I'm going to go back and grab that marked frame of eggs and larvae that I had in the third box and I'm going to put it in here now so I don't forget about it. We're not done yet because we haven't gone into the bottom box and there could very well be some more brood in there. So what I'm going to do for now is take these edge food frames and I'm going to move them into the third box. That's the one that I've already taken off because I'm hoping that down below I'm going to find some more frames uh, to put in here with the splits that I'm going to take. So just to make some room, I'm going to move these two open food frames up into the third box. Now I have room to put this on my top cover and I have access to everything here. So I can still move things around as much as I need to while I'm rearranging. that they never took over the winter and I'm looking close there's no fresh stuff because I don't want anything that could ferment so all that's left on here is some capped honey this is a keeper okay I'm gonna sit it to the outside and when I'm all done I'll brush any last bees off it and take it down to the shop to extract You can see now that I'm down into the third box that there's a few more bees flying around. Um, they are feeling good and disturbed now. None of them are being aggressive, but they're definitely flying around wondering what the heck's going on. There, this is a really beautiful um, mixed food frame. So there's some open nectar and some pollen mixed on here. This is what I'm going to leave behind in that bottom box. So this is kind of going to be um, on the edges of their brood. And I'll talk through exactly how this is set up once I put it back together. But I know that a frame like this needs to go on either side of the brood nest that I'm leaving behind. There we go, another nice 
mixed frame. There's some fat fruit still emerging. There's some young eggs and larvae. I'm having a look for the queen because I sure hope to find her. I will talk about plan B, um, but it's definitely a little more intrusive. everything that has already emerged, which is exactly what you want to see, is that all ages of brood. Oh, and there she is. So I have my queen on this frame. Now, the queen needs to stay with the original hive. Okay? Anything that you take from this is going to either make a new queen or get a new queen. And because I'm using this box, this new box, as what stays behind. I am going to put her in here. Um, another thing that you can do if you really want to make sure she doesn't go anywhere, I mean, if you put her in there, she is not likely to try and get away. She's happy on her but you can also capture her in a clip with a few attendants. And then you know she's not going anywhere. So I'll sit her on there nice and close so that they can all still have access to her. Actually, since I have those three kept fruit, now that I have clipped her, I'm gonna put this one in my second box here because it has lots of nice eggs. It's important to keep track of what's what. Uh, it's easy to forget which box was full of honey and which box was full of uh, fruit. that we're going to take splits from. So I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames of young brood in there. Um, I expect I'll add one or two more and that's going to be enough for two really good nukes to come out of that. as much cap fruit as I need so this one is just going to go straight into the nukes and that'll provide uh, lots of nurse bees to help take care of those younger eggs and larvae. And now we're out to the outer edge so this is my first food frame and I know that I'm out past the edge of the brood nest. So this is going to stay in here. So what I have in here now is just my outer frames. I have an empty space where I'm going to put the blank one back in there. Then I have a food frame and kind of like a blank. They haven't done much with it, but it's drawn home to the outside. I'm going to put my three or four um, my three or four frames of capped brood plus the queen right in the middle of this bottom box. So if we're working out from the middle, we're gonna have three to four frames of capped brood with the queen. Then right beside that, you want to put a blank frame. Not blank is in empty, or sorry, not blank is in no wax. <laughs> um, ideally you want it to have comb but be empty cells because with all of this being capped, the queen needs somewhere to lay. So you're going to give her that empty frame to lay in. Then you're going to have food frames. You don't necessarily want to look for those perfect honey frames that you would harvest. What you want to look for is frames that have some pollen on them as well. That's the food that they need for their brood. And then anything outside that can just be empty or blank frames depending on what you have. Okay, so you want brood nest, a little bit of space for the queen to lay, food, blanks. So I'm going to put that back together. You can see now that there's all kinds of bees on my little clip here um, because they want to stay with their queen. These 
are my cat brood frames that are staying with the original hive. And they're going to go on the bottom. In a week or 10 days, the activity level in this hive will be such that you won't even notice um, that all of the brood was taken out of them. Um, they rebound really quickly this time of year. There's just so many bees being born. And if you don't split, uh, you're likely going to be battling swarms for the next couple of months. So this is one of those things um, that a beekeeper, as you go through the years and have success overwintering your bees, it's something that you need to get used to doing, and then the decision is just what to do with those splits. Um, whether you keep expanding your own operation, or you start to sell off splits. Incidentally, there's a massive demand for bees right now, um, and if you want to split to avoid swarming, it will be very easy uh, to rehome some bees. So there I've released the queen down into the bottom box. I'm not gonna move too quickly. I wanna watch her get down in between the frames before I put the queen excluder on because I do not wanna take any chances with potentially injuring her. Okay. And now I'm just sticking my edge frame back over here. This is the hive that is going to stay here for the rest of the summer. They're going to build up, they're going to be nice and strong again in a couple weeks, and they're going to make lots of honey as long as the sun shines. Okay, now I'm going to slide this queen excluder on. There's lots of bees here, so I kind of use it to like scoop them out of the way so I'm not smushing too many, which they also don't love, but at least they survive it. Now on top of this is where I'm going to put the young, um, the young larva and eggs. And the idea there is that any nurse bees from down below are going to work their way up and they're kind of going to like find their place again. We've really um, messed them up a bit by doing this and we need all of those bees to find where they belong and we're going to give them kind of the next 24 hours to do that. So now we know that our queen is staying down below. When we come back to take this off or to turn this into nukes tomorrow, we don't have to worry about finding her again, but we know that we've also got enough nurse bees with all this brood um, for when we remove it. Now I need one more frame in here. Uh, I didn't quite have a full 10 which is just fine. Um, there, this is still going to turn into um, two nukes and maybe part of another. Those are my honey frames. So I'm going to look in here and see if I have a bit of an open mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll just give them The other way that you could set up this box, and especially if you are just doing this to keep the nuke yourself, is you could set up this top box so that it's ready to go and become its own hive right away tomorrow. We still are going to have some work to do. I'll do a part two tomorrow about what we do with this box as we turn it into nukes. But if you want to skip that step, all you would do here is set this up much like we set up the bottom box, except the brood is a bit younger. So you would have all of your frames of brood in the middle, okay? Whatever age and stage it is, doesn't matter. All of your frames of brood in the middle, a food frame, including pollen on either side, and then blanks or empties outside of that. Then all you have to do tomorrow is take this whole box off, um, give it a queen or wait for it to raise its own queen, um, and you're good to go. So that's option two, because I have this just packed with brood. Tomorrow I'm going to have to go through and grab two for this nuke, two for this nuke, two for this nuke, um, and do it that way. Now I'm going to throw the third box back on top. This box is open honey um, and blank frames. 
or empty frames. And because I took two honey frames out of it, I'm just going to run over to some extra frames that I have over here. down here. The nurse bees are not going to come up into the top box because they have nothing to do up there. Um, so even when I remove this tomorrow, I know that I'm taking all of the right bees with. It. There's nobody that I need to worry about um, missing or leaving behind. blank frames, um, as in there is no wax built on them yet, then it might still be a good idea to keep some feed on for the spring mm -hmm. to give them what they need to build up that wax really quickly. Since ours are all drawn out, um, they don't need the feed. We had it on because we worried that that rain might stay long term. Um, but now that it looks like we're getting some reasonably decent weather, we're going to take it off. And we're closed back up. So quick rehash. Down here we have the hive that's going to stay behind, capped brood, one blank for the queen to lay in because she's down there too and she needs space to work, food frames, and then empties. In the, then we have the queen excluder. In the middle box we have all of our young brood, eggs and larvae. If you're making more than one split you just want to jam pack it all in here. If you're only making one split, then you're going to center the eggs and larvae, then you're going to have the food frames and any blanks or empties to the outside. And then up here, if you have a third box, and you might not, and that's okay, um, you're going to have any open honey. If you don't have or need this third box, where I'm saying empties and blanks to the side, that's where you're going to put anything extra. Okay, so you may not need or have this third box. You still want to follow the principle of brood in the middle, then food, and then whatever else is out to the sides. All right, that was part one of how we are doing our spring splits this year. Tomorrow I'll be back and I'll do a video of how I'm going to organize these into nukes. I'll talk about typically what a nuke looks like um, in BC, kind of what buyers are expecting when they get a nuke. On Friday, I'll do a video of introducing a queen into that, um, and then we'll see if there's questions uh, and other things you want to see. I'd love to keep these videos going. All right, thanks for watching.